Hello and welcome to All My Art and Soul. I'm Michelle Holden and today is of Earth and Sky number 16. And we're going to use these collage papers which uh, were which was last week's video. And uh, I mentioned that um, I was going to use them. So this week I'm using them in of Earth and Sky number 16. And as you can see, I'm showing uh, the bases of how I made each one, which tool I used, and obviously the very bright orange, pink, uh, Titan buff and white, and of course my favorite uh, golden teal fluid paint. And I, uh, I, I ordered some Posca markers and just got those. So now um, I'm going to activate the, uh, the surface or the substrate with the Posca markers and um, it's funny, and you probably can relate to this, when you get a new, uh, a, a new tool or a, a new material, uh, sometimes you just don't, you just start, and you don't know what to do with them. So um, that's where my other videos uh, were, our tutorials will be a little more, uh, they'll have a little more intention and teaching uh, as I explore and have a lot more time because my teaching season is over now and now I can dedicate a lot more time to my uh, new larger series uh, abstract uh, mixed media series which I have going and uh, stay tuned for those videos they'll be coming up soon and I think it's about time to get in front of the camera and uh, we are celebrating over, uh, I am, or we are, 500 subscribers. So this is uh, uh, a big, a big time for me as a, as a new YouTuber. So thank you very much, everyone. And uh, if you're liking this content, please remember to hit the like button and subscribe because I'm always evolving and changing. So back to Earth and Sky number 16. As you can see, uh, I still have orange, pink, yellow, all those bright, vibrant colors on my mind. Um, I think that's the only intention that I came in with besides um, using my new collage papers of the same and similar colors. So as you can see, you have to dab down and, as, uh, and you can see that I'm getting used to these. Um, they're brand new. I haven't even activated uh, these markers yet. And what I'm doing is, and what I'm, I'm just learning to be more aware of, still without too much thinking, um, during each layer, is uh, the combination, the combinations of layers on your work. What looks great, or, and it's not what looks great. Um, so I, I, pretend I didn't say that. It's what, what is the effect that you're going for? What creates an interesting effect? A whole bunch of lines and then veiled with a white or a dark and then coming in with solid shapes with harsh edges and then a layer of loose on top of that. But always um, uh, enabling the previous layer to peek through in some area or a lot. So it depends. So that's what I'm going, that's my plans to experiment with in the, the next coming weeks. Um, on these, on the birch panel or the cradle board and on my large canvases. So how, how I work is I use these art journal pages to, um, uh, to explore and find some interesting effects, uh, different types of layers. And that's where I, I may need to adjust my intention uh, to a more exploratory um, uh, um, process. So I really think I'll start a different journal. I'll leave these of Earth and Sky journals to themselves because they're definitely dictating where I'm going. Um, where I want to do my my other exploring of different layers 
on, uh, on a different type of, of substrate. So as you can see, I'm uh, making some nice bright orange stripes. And then I wanted to see what the brayer would do because I want to maintain a horizontal uh, type of, of area, areas of color. And this pink, as you can see in the upper right-hand corner, is pretty bright uh, in hue. So I just sort of doused it with some white and then going over with the brayer, uh, which thins out the layer, spreads out the marks, and it does dry a lot more quickly. And I love that. So that, that page was made with the same pink, Titan Buff, and an ochre or a yellow oxide. Um, I find the yellow oxide a little more intense in hue and I'm, I'm starting to like that more. Where the ochre um, is more opaque and not, um, it's just the value is just a little more subtle. So I'm just, uh, was finding the direction of the tear on this paper uh, this type of paper was the, oh, let's see, what was it? Um, yes, it was a newsprint paper, the larger sheets. Uh, you can get them in uh, various different sizes. And so I wanted, and, and that's what's on my mind, uh, letting the previous layer show through. Well, I, I want to cover it, I want to add to it, but I still want to... Um, let it peep through and why I tore that is I did not like the scale of that piece so then I just wanted to tear it off and I put it at another angle and then another section of that piece pink is showing through and then I use the glue stick very very fast for this style of working um, I use heavy gloss medium and Mod Podge when I'm working with larger or thicker pieces of paper which need more adhesion. There's my favorite. I'm keeping that little piece around just so uh, uh, it'll remind me that I need to make some more just like that. That'll be a challenge in itself. So there's some dots. So that was not obviously the direction of the tear but I got a little piece off there that I end up using. I just tear it down a little bit more so I like the shape. And I like those dots, but I find they're screaming and they overpower everything else. So I just put them to the side. And I like my eight, which on its side is, uh, it symbolizes infinity. I use it, uh, I use it a lot in my work. I better change it up a little. <laughs> Oh, I so enjoy making these videos uh, just for my own growth because I get to watch myself. I, used to, I get to step out and go, what am I doing? Or, wow, that was really cool. <laughs> it's an interesting opportunity. Um, so this is this um, handmade paper where you buy it in bunches. I think they're just scraps. Um, I got this from the Curry's Art Store. They had a, oh, here you go. So I was running out of, of paper on my desk. So I thought, you know what? Why don't I just show them the big bin of, and this is just all my scraps after I have torn uh, from a whole bunch of handmade papers. And you don't throw anything away. You just throw it in a bin and uh, off you go. So I have selected a few that, oh yes, that is from, oh, that's a photograph of my own. Uh, that's on laser paper. Uh, so it has a bit more permanent um, lasting because, of course, the laser paper has a little bit of a gloss on it. And for some reason, it just fits right there. I think because of the clouds, the horizontal, the same type of feeling. So, and I'm going for a feeling here. I think in the future though, um, I will be using a lot more um, images in parts of the work, but 
it's interesting uh, to use them not even as the photo or the meaning. Well, you, uh, I use them as a meaning, but using them exactly like an art element, like a color or a shape. And then you even can end up drawing lines going right over the photo, which then um, treats it more like an element. I know that there are elements in, but they're less thought of as a photograph, you know, so literal. Anyway, so uh, this type of paper uh, is the same where you have a big sheet of uh, newsprint and you just make marks in different areas all over the paper. Uh, and that's where you can, in instead of making one giant area, um, piece of collage paper with the same marks, you just experiment and use different sections. And then um, what I've done is I folded them up into eights like a, like a book and dipped them in coffee, uh, which newsprint really absorbs the stain takes it up and then uh, it's a little tricky you need to uh, once you take them out uh, you soak them for just a short amount of time uh, or they'll get too soggy and you lift them out let them dry a bit and then unfold them to let them dry large and flat now they will tear but the effects are amazing it gives it gives that old um, old paper paper look especially if you can't find where I am, my area, I'm not in the cities where I would love to go to more, um, more places to find um, art journaling materials or ephemera for my work. So this is another piece, not stained with coffee, but as you can see, it's faded. Um, and I just like that old neutral. This is, a, I would consider this a neutral feel and I'm gonna be putting some more pink layer here and there, not there because I already have enough below to balance the upper right-hand corner. Oh, I love this. Same paper, same session of mark making on it. As you can see, it's, it's old and it's already faded. And then just with some, some white acrylic paint, just with, I don't know, a paintbrush going over it. And it just has that, that crafted look rather than, uh, you know, a stamped or stenciled uh, paper, which is okay, depending on, you know, depending on what, you're, what effect you want. And I'm also trying to use different types of shapes and negative space. Oh, I love that one. I don't know if I end up using that or not. Um, yes, I do. I love it up there. I just don't know. I forget which direction I put it. So that piece is when, uh, at the end of an art session, and I have a whole bunch of leftover uh, paint, of course, and I uh, roll it with my brayer. See, that would have looked good there, but I didn't choose that. Looking now, during the video, Oh, yes. Here is this handmade, very translucent, um, I think these are Japanese papers, handmade papers with so much texture in them. And then I love the negative space that it makes with the orange stripes and you can still see through uh, underneath the previous layer. That's what I'm, that's what I'm going to be experimenting with. Um, oh, yes love this piece. This piece, um, when I do my collages and my small work, and I've, you've seen previous videos, um, make your own collage papers, part, I don't know if it's part one or two, where I'm using red and three different pieces. Well, sometimes they don't work out. Those ones did. And I've just piled them. And um, But now I've been cutting sections out of them and then using it as a collage piece that I made myself. So I'm gonna be making more of those. So you might wanna consider that. Um, it's it's uh, a piece from a sci-fi. Uh, so it has stars, it has all sorts of marks and what you end up with is amazing. And then of course the, the, 
the lettering, the Eastern lettering. And words. Words are incredible, especially when you can cut them, uh, cut the sentences or the sections out of context, and then, of course, you use them in your own way. Um, really adds uh, a mystery, a story to the work. Um, so, yes, using my China marker, and of course, the glue on that particular piece wasn't dry yet, so the China marker just didn't quite take. So being patient, waiting for things to dry, I still do not own a little hair dryer. I have a heat gun, which is way too hot for this kind of work. So um, again, subscribers who mention that, I need to get my heat gun. <laughs> I mean, my dryer, hair dryer, small one. So, and also making sure that your your knife and the blade is sharp enough. So I realized that when I was cutting and doing more tearing than cutting, so I need to make sure my tools are up to snuff before I do the next page or do another session of work. And this is a piece of, um, I guess you'd call it burlap. Um, it's from, you know, from the leftovers from a carpet. It was tossed away. And as you can see, I finally remembered. So I, uh, to focus my, my lens, still learning and remembering to do things and look at the detail now. So my apologies for that, but I was so glad at least I remembered for this last session of recording. So now you can see the textures. Um, it just needed to go there. It was just a little piece lying around. And I just love it because it's neutral, but yet the texture is different. So again, differences. So I'm uh, loading up my Posca pen. I do believe this is a black one. And white. I don't know what color that is. Yes, it's black. So I'm just sort of repeating what I did with the China marker. And I don't know, lines or something. Lines have so much to them. Connection, uh, movement, moving the eye. And then of course, the trusty Q-tip. And looking at this now, I believe, I don't know if it would have looked better with black dots up there or they would have looked too overpowering. Sort of re to repeat the, the larger one in the section in the lower left. Hmm, I'd have to test that. I'll uh, try to remember that um, uh, for the next page. So that's the thing. Um, keeping notes as well in an in a art notebook uh, numbering each um, each of Earth and Sky number 15, what you learn from there. Um, and then you could even paste it on the in the book that you see here. Uh, you might want to write right on the page or write on a separate paper and um, keeping that uh, those little notes as the things you want to remember. So there's that other piece of pink. It finally found its spot. And uh, I think it's okay. I end up veiling it a little bit. See, just adding those little dots pushes it back. So it's not quite screaming so loudly. And as you can see, the catalyst tool on the upper right-hand corner, I never did end up using that for this page but I'm going to be using that on my jelly print uh, printer in the next uh, batch of collage papers. Um, and this is just something from the kitchen. I like the little squares and just putting a little bit more orange, adding another layer. And I found it too light up there, so it just needed a little bit more catch the eye. Yes, that's looking much better. Um, I think I'm going to add a little bit more tight and buff. 
before the big tape removal. Oh yes, here are the last words. So I just was looking at this piece of paper and glanced and saw these and they, they resonated with me. So anything that resonates with me for a particular piece, it's going down on it. At least uh, the intention is there. And uh, I'll read them. The one below is, says, if you were caught outside in a thunderstorm, just that alone makes you, makes you wonder. It adds a story. And the words here I love because they continued the story. And they say, he knew what was ahead. So that's sort of the, the theme that I'm going for. Uh, the mystery, the unknown, um, using intuition like this page to go down deep and uh, see what's there inside. And uh, that sort of drives my art process and my exploration. And uh, you'll probably recognize some of that. Uh, there's always stars and planets. And, 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 and yes, that's outside. But going down deep. And, and all of that is really connected. Anyway, so that's uh, the sort of a little bit of the philosophy or my thinking behind But I also want to create some abstract work um, without purely abstract, without any images. Maybe there'll be, of course, there'll be collage in there and sort of really leave the viewer. And as you can see, I am done. So that was a bit of tight and buff just to push that piece of pink back. And this is some new frog tape, which I am not happy with because it really stuck to the page. So I am definitely going back to my little piece of white tape and then hitting it with a dryer. See, paper came off of every piece, but it was only very thin and it didn't really affect it too much, though I would prefer none coming off the edge of the paper. And uh, as you watch me struggle with this, and oh, anyway, it looks good. It still looks very, very good. So an interesting piece. So as I said earlier, if you're really enjoying this content, uh, don't forget to uh, hit the like button. That helps uh, YouTube uh, be aware uh, that this video or this channel is important. And please subscribe um, and hop over to my, um, my website. My shop is almost up and ready. I am almost there and I will uh, be uh, letting you know in the coming future. Follow me on Instagram and everything is here in the comments below. So um, after I remember what date it was, <laughs> as you can see the pencil. I will see you in the next video.